So you were um, not like I'm just going off what I what I could find. You were the it, it said you were the executive producer of visual effects on Tron. Mm -hmm. Is then that was accurate? Okay, mm -hmm. and then so you're getting you're going from the sound editor to visual effects, and now you're executive producer of visual effects, and now we just came out with Snow White, and you're listed as the executive producer or one of the executive producers on that. The reason that I'm executive producer on Snow White is because um, at, at the end of Digital Domain, I, I called up Joe Roth, my old boss during Revolution Days, and we were just having a conversation, you know, like how each of us were doing, and, and he said, so where are you right now? And I said, well, I'm president of Digital Domain. He says, well, that's a horrible job. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, yeah, I mean, it's tough. I mean, you know, it's a, you're a vendor and you're like begging for work where everybody wants to be overseas. And he says, yeah, that's terrible. You should come and work for me. So I said, oh, okay. So that would be fun. I don't have to beg for work anymore. <laughs> I can actually give work out, which is way more fun. And in talking to Joe, it, it was very easy for him to understand. He had just finished doing Alice in Wonderland it's all about post. It's all about visual effects. I mean, you take five people on a soundstage and it's a 360 degree green screen. That's all wonderful. And you're, you need those great performances, but then it takes oftentimes a year just to make sure that the bunny rabbit gets done <laughs> and Alice looks real and Snow White um, you know, is really, you know, in a, in, a, in a castle as opposed to something that's only 20 feet tall and, you know, drawn, um, you know, on a, on a wall. I mean, it's, it takes a lot of work to bring that to life. So Joe understood that and said, yeah, and you can be executive producer. So I think it, in many ways it's forging a lot of new ground for post-production people because... You know, like I said, we were sort of like, yeah, somehow it all gets done, as opposed to, yeah, you know what, we are as important as the people in production. Very cool. So now, because I've heard a lot of things about what executive producer can actually mean. Like I could, you know, I've, um, I've even, you know, a lot, of, a lot of times you get executive producer credit if you just give enough money to the project without even mm -hmm. doing anything. So what did, what, was, what did you actually, what, was your, what were you in charge of on, on Snow White? What were you doing? On Snow White, I was in charge of uh, all editorial, all sound, all visual effects, uh, deciding on all the vendors and making sure that everything got on time and, <laughs> and on or under budget. So it, you know, it's a pretty major task. I, you know, and I think you're right, an executive producer is a very loose title, as is oftentimes producer. Sometimes a producer uh, is just somebody that, that bought the rights to the book. You know, same with executive producer. Uh, but you know what, it's, it's all about sometimes, you know, who's your agent and who's your lawyer and who, What's the, how is the deal crafted? So uh, it's, it's interesting. There's a million different reasons people are producers and executive producers. What were some of the experiences that were most helpful to you when you were starting out? I think that the best experience for me starting out was always when people had um, the confidence in me that I could do whatever I wanted to do. And I think knowing that, that they had confidence made me have confidence, and then that's really when you can take off. You know, I'm, I'm lucky. My father always thought that I could be president of the United States. And oftentimes when I give, you know, speeches to, um, you know, uh, Girls Incorporated or, you know, anything with a bunch of kids, and parents, I will say, you know, the, the smartest thing you can do for your child is to tell them that they can do whatever they want and that they are great. And that, you know what, honey, if you want to be president, you can be president. You know what, whatever. You know, I think that actually makes the biggest difference in the world of how a child grows up. So I was lucky because I had two older brothers and they taught me to be like the best pitcher on the softball team, and you know. And then my father told me that I was gorgeous, so not like horrible, gawky, big glasses, terrible looking, 
Um, my mother told me I was wonderful. So I had a great upbringing, and I think that has a lot to do with confidence. If you don't have a great upbringing, uh, you have to somehow get to a place within deep inside your soul where you convince yourself that you can do it. And that's the key, because if you think you can do it, everyone else will think you can do it too. The problem in not only in film, but in, in any other kind of job, if someone sniffs insecurity, you're dead. Because that might mean that they're going to lose their job. So the smartest thing you can do is to make everybody feel like, you know what, I'm fine. I'm in control. This is going to be fucking great. Then everyone's like, oh, OK, great. Whew. I can, I, can, I can go to sleep tonight. But that's the key. That's the key. That's the best thing you can do you know, to your child is to make them feel like you're the best. <laughs>